Hello everybody, welcome back. You know, I went down a rabbit hole recently trying to answer the following question. You know, viruses are for some reason able to be frozen almost indefinitely for thousands and thousands of years and then thawed out and they seem to function okay, whereas human cells for some reason are unable to do that. And so I learned a few things along the way and I'd like to share it with you today. Now let's begin by discussing some fascinating examples of viruses that have defied the icy grip of space and time. One notable example is the pithovirus Cypericum, a giant virus discovered in 2014 in the Siberian permafrost. This ancient virus was estimated to be about 30 thousand years old and found to still be infectious after being thawed from the frozen ground. Its resilience highlights the remarkable ability of certain viruses to withstand extreme conditions even for millennia. Another example is in 2006, scientists aboard the International Space Station conducted an experiment to study the effects of microgravity on a plant virus known for its stability. Now remarkably, the virus remained viable and infectious even after being exposed to the vacuum of space for several weeks. Now this finding has implications for understanding the potential spread of viruses and obvious implications in our exploration of space. For example, if we're going to have a human mission to Mars and we have some, some viruses hanging out on the outside of the hull or even inside of the spacecraft, we get to Mars, we might think as humans that they're all dead, but they might just be become reanimated again and we have human viruses on the surface of Mars. So we need to understand this. Now beyond Earth, viruses have also been found in extreme environments such as deep sea hydrothermal vents and the Antarctic ice. These environments are characterized by high pressure, low temperature, and minimal nutrients. They provide unique challenges for life forms to survive. But in spite of this, viruses have demonstrated their ability to persist and even thrive in these hostile conditions. Why is that? Why can viruses do this, but human cells we seem to not be able to freeze? So let's first tackle the question, what is a virus anyway? Let's dive deeper into the intricate world of viruses and explore how they actually hijack human cells to multiply while they blur the lines between what is alive and what is not alive. So within a virus, its structure, first of all, is relatively simple compared to the complex machinery found in human cells. Most viruses consist of genetic material, either DNA or RNA, and it's encased in a protein coat called a capsid. Now, unlike human cells, viruses lack the essential components for independent metabolism and reproduction. This leads to the question, are viruses alive or are they dead? And it really just comes down to the definition. While they do exhibit some characteristics of living organisms, such as the ability to evolve and replicate, viruses cannot carry out cellular processes on their own and they require a host cell to multiply. In fact, that is one of the main differences that most scientists consider viruses to not really be alive because yes they can replicate but they require some other host cell in order to be able to do the replication. So once a virus enters the body it attaches to a specific receptor on the surface of a host cell. You can think of a virus almost like a microscopic syringe just injecting part of itself inside the cell. Now here's the crazy part once inside the cell the viral genetic material takes control of the host cellular machinery. It hijacks the cell's resources, including enzymes and ribosomes, to replicate its own genetic material and reproduce viral proteins. These components are then assembled into a new virus particle, which eventually bursts out of the host cell, destroying it in the process. So basically, it injects itself into a cell. It causes the host cell's nucleus and machinery to actually reproduce the virus inside, and when it can't contain any more of it, the cell explodes, releasing the viral material to all the adjacent cells for the process to repeat again and again. So on its own, viruses can't really reproduce or do any of this, and so that's why we're not sure, is it alive or is it dead? But it absolutely can replicate. 
Now, this cycle repeats itself, with each infected cell producing thousands of new virus particles that can go on to infect other cells in the body. The rapid replication and spread of viruses within the body contributes to the symptoms of viral infection, and that's what we feel when we start to get a fever, and we start to have chills, and we don't feel well after having a virus. So, while viruses might lack the complexity of a living cell, their ability to manipulate host cells for their own replication showcases the remarkable adaptability of viruses. But the question remains, how are some viruses able to survive these extreme conditions, including freezing, while human cells can't? Well, viruses are unique entities that straddle the line between the living and the non-living. Unlike human cells, which are very, very complex and rely on complex metabolic processes to maintain their structure and function, viruses are just simply much, much simpler. So when a virus is frozen, their metabolic process slows down to a near halt. And this dormancy allows them to withstand the extreme conditions for long, long periods of time. Additionally, the lack of cellular machinery inside of the virus means that they're less susceptible to damage from freezing. So the bottom line is viruses are just much, much simpler. They don't have the complex machinery that are inside of a mammal cell, for instance. And so when they're frozen, they're able to slow their metabolic process down to the point where nothing is really happening. And when they're reanimated, they just pick up where they left off. On the other hand, human cells are highly dependent on a delicate balance of internal processes to survive. So when exposed to freezing temperatures, the water inside the human cells can form ice crystals which can disrupt cellular structures and lead to cell death. So you might remember that when ice freezes or when water freezes, it expands when the ice crystal forms. So because human cells are more complex and they're mostly filled with water, as soon as a human cell starts to freeze, the ice crystals inside, when they form, they begin to bulge out the cell membrane, causing the cell to rupture. So the process of freezing a more complex cell causes it to be destroyed. So while some viruses have evolved mechanisms to survive freezing temperatures over long periods, human cells are much more vulnerable to damage. This ability of viruses to endure extreme environments has important implications in microbiology, medicine, and even astrobiology. When it comes to preserving human cells, one of the biggest challenges is preventing these ice crystals from forming in the first place. This can lead to, as I said, damaged cell membranes and structures. So to overcome this, scientists use a process called cryoprotection. Cryoprotectants are chemicals that are actually added to the cell suspension before freezing that lower the freezing point of water and reduce the ice crystal formation. Common cryoprotectants include glycerol, dimethyl sulfoxide, and ethylene glycol. These compounds help to dehydrate the cells and protect them from damaging effects of ice formation. So we can't really freeze a hole in human body because we can't do this to every cell in your body, but if you're freezing individual cells for whatever purpose, then if you replace the liquid water in there with one of these chemicals, then you can prevent the cell from rupturing, and so we can freeze human cells for thawing out on a small scale. Once the cells are treated with cryoprotectants, they're slowly cooled to very low temperatures, usually around negative 196 degrees Celsius, using specialized equipment. The gradual cooling process allows the cells to enter a state of suspended animation without causing any ice crystal formation. Once frozen, the cells can be stored for long periods of time without significant degradation. But when needed, they can be thawed and they can be quickly warmed, removing the cryoprotectants after the fact and restoring the cells to working order. Now, cryopreservation has absolutely revolutionized fields of medicine, such as organ transplant, reproductive biology, and they're allowing researchers to store and transport frozen human cells for study and tissues for study in various applications. Now, I find this crazy, actually. In recent years, scientists have successfully demonstrated the ability to cryopreserve small embryos of mammals, including mice, and revive them at a later time, effectively reanimating them after they've been frozen. This has led to speculation about the possibility of extending this cryostasis to larger organisms, including humans, although there are many more problems with actually pulling that off. Proponents envision a future where individuals could be frozen just before death with the hope of being revived and treated for their underlying conditions at a later time when the medical technology has advanced sufficiently. 
Despite ongoing research and debates surrounding this, the prospect of freezing and thawing an entire human being remains firmly in the realm of science fiction. And there you have it, the frosty mystery of viruses surviving the icy depths of time while human cells hit the cold shoulder. It's a tale as old as humanity itself, as viruses have been interacting with humans ever since the dawn of humanity in the first place. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please drop me a line, let me know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.